Hi, this is Sunny from Sunny's Eyes, and I promised you guys a product review. So, um, here are a few of my favorites and a couple not so favorites. So, here we go. Um, first, I have here kind of a sampling of blues from different brands. And I don't know how well this is going to show up on camera, so I'll just wing it here. I have an iPod taped to a tripod, and so it's taller than me almost. So um, this is M. Graham and Company's Cobalt Blue, and it is, um, you can tell it's a little bit translucent, but fairly, still fairly opaque. Um, this is Liquitex Basics and Ultramarine Blue, and you can tell it's a little bit transparent too. Um, let's turn this. This is Blick Studio Acrylics, and you can tell it is actually, you know, fairly opaque, um, and it's a good paint. This is Art Advantage. It is Thalo Green. I know it's not in the blues, but this is the only tube I have for a very good reason. Um, and this is Golden. Let's see if you can get it here. This is Golden Ultramarine Blue, and it is fairly opaque, and it is um, a heavy body paint. Um, the others are a little bit softer body. Um, I will tell you, my favorite is Golden. I like that it's a heavier body, and um, I like the consistency. It's really nice to work with. It is expensive. Um, I kind of did some price comparisons here, um, so you can get a little bit of an idea of cost. Um, the M. Graham and Company, when I bought it at Craft Warehouse, which pretty much always has them on sale, um, is listed as $14.49, but their sale price is $8.69. So still um, a fairly good value. If you had to buy the full price, of course, it would be um, a little bit a little bit more spendy, but Craft Warehouse almost always has them on sale. They have their sale price on them all the time. Um, this is Liquitex Basics. They regularly are around $4.99 to $5.99. Um, they, Michael's um, is where I generally get them, and they often have sales or 40% off coupons to make them even cheaper. This is Blick Studio Acrylic. It is listed as $7.20. The sale is $3.59, and this is the size tubes for all of them. Um, the three studio grades. Um, Blick is really good paint. I really like it. Um, it would be my second choice to Golden um, that I've tried so far. I have not tried the Liquitex Professional Grade, so I will give you that. Um, I have tried the M. Graham & Company, which is um, not considered as... This is the M. Graham & Company. Um, same size tube as this, although this one's almost gone, but um, I really like the M. Graham & Company. I also really, really like their watercolors. They are really nice watercolors. They're very vibrant. Um, I think that most people consider this as not as high of a quality as, say, Golden or Liquitex um, professional grade, but I really like them, and they are a good second to um, Golden. Um, the Art Advantage, $4.49 for this tube. You get what you pay for with this one. It, I got it on clearance for $3.39. It basically pours out of the tube. It's just, it's really, really runny. And it is um, way more translucent for, you know, these colors. And, you know, this is a phthalo green. Um, this is phthalo blue. This one and this one are ultramarine. And this one is cobalt. So they're a little bit different colors, but they those particular colors generally have... Um, kind of the same amount of translucency um, as a blue. I mean, like some yellows and reds and um, are much more translucent. Um, so I tried to give you kind of an idea of colors that would have, you know, normally have similar consistencies and translucency. Um, I can never, I can never recommend the Art Advantage for anything. I really do not like it. I mean, I guess I guess it could be better than craft paints because it does have a little bit of that sheen, that um, that satin kind of finish that acrylics do. So you wouldn't have the chalkiness of a craft paint, but it's I really don't like it. <laughs> and golden is golden is about my favorite, and 
that one I would recommend, but it is expensive and most of us can't really afford it, which is why I have a lot of Liquitex Basics and Blick Studio Acrylics. And I love the Blick Studio Acrylics. If you're going to use a student grade, I highly recommend this. Um, you do have to deal with shipping, but if you buy a bunch at once, it doesn't hurt quite so bad. Um, but So these two are my favorite. I can recommend these for the studio grade. Um, and either Golden or M. Graham and Company I could recommend if you want to pay a little bit more. Um, the cobalt hues are usually more expensive um, because they use cobalt, which is um, not quite so readily available and a little bit more expensive of a, two, of a um, pigment. Uh, cadmiums are that way as well. So you kind of get an idea of the acrylics. Um, like I said, Blick, Blick, um, Dick Blick online uh, supplier um, generally always has their Blick acrylics uh, listed as a sell price. I uh, will show you. This is their catalog. Well, this was their catalog. <laughs> I usually get it in the mail. You can also go online. Um, and their brick, Blick Acrylics are almost always have their sale prices alongside their list prices. And they're always almost always on sale. I mean, I don't know why they even call it a sale because it's always on sale pretty much. But it's amazing. And Golden Acrylics, they, all of these, they usually have you save, you know, a certain amount um, from a list price to their sale price. So if you do want to get something more expensive, um, you can order online. And if you're going to order a few things, I think their minimum shipping is around $8.95. So, I mean, you know, if you buy several tubes of paint, you're still going to save over what you would pay for it at the, at the art store, especially because Golden is expensive and is rarely ever on sale. You can use a coupon, but they're rarely ever just on sale that I've seen at either Craft Warehouse or Michael's or, um, actually I don't think Craft Warehouse even carries Golden, but Michael's and Joann's, um, they're rarely ever on sale. So if you want to try those out, you know, go through Dick Blick or Jerry's Artorama sometimes has that stuff on sale too. Um, so moving on, let me put away my tubes of acrylic here. Um, I was looking for the Dr. Martin's, I think it is, um, India inks that come in a thing like this, and they did not have any in that were just the colors. They only had some metallics, and I really wanted just plain colors. So I got these at my local art store called the Art Department, and um, they are an acrylic ink, and they have really good... Um, really good consistency. I really like them. I was going to see if I could find the other one that I got. I must not have. Um, and they're white. I noticed that I'm, when my sister used it in a thick application, it had a tendency to crack slightly. So I don't know how that's gonna but work out for me. I haven't used them that much yet, but that's the black there. It's the Dale Rowney FW acrylic artist acrylic artist ink water resistant no clogging pigmented so not supposed to clog up anything you use or write with um, this is the kind of India ink that I have used for a while now and I may decide to well, you know, this is the acrylic ink, so I'm going to kind of look at those side by side when I get a chance. This is Higgins. It's drawing ink. I think you can get it like at um, Michael's. It's waterproof, but it is super um, more translucent. Uh, let's get a water bottle here. Where's my sprayer? Up oh, here it is. I'll just give them a little squirt. So you can kind of see how they they blend out and that green you can tell is really really transparent and I haven't used this one very much um, but I do love the um, FW artist ink acrylic artist ink and the India that I use um, I do like it's nice and black and it's thick and it kind of when you have a really thick application it dries just a little bit shiny uh, 
but the these acrylics do dry with about the same sheen as an acrylic paint and um, that may be because they're sort of a watered down version of acrylic I'm not sure um, but I really love these love this purple it's one of my favorite colors I really 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 love it okay I'm gonna set that aside to dry and hopefully not run all over everywhere um, another thing I want to talk about is wafer thin dies these I love these are like the spellbinders and um, the one you know the really thin flat ones like that and I don't remember which brand is which but this is basically how it is and I have these on these um, magnetic sheets let me I'll show you the case now that I had it stacked under with other stuff um, comes in a case like this it just opens up and you have the magnetic sheets and your dies aren't going to come off of there they stay put and I really like that and it stores them flat and then they're easy to just um, pick up and use and they store all nice and tidy and I like storing them like this because I have a flat space for this where I don't always have flat space or you know place to stand stuff up as much like a book or something like that um, Oops, sorry, I knocked you off the desk. There. Um, and I really like these dies. They cut even fairly thick cardstock um, really well, and it they do emboss well, because that's one of the things they're supposed to do is emboss well. And um, I really like them. I would recommend them and enjoy them. So craft to your heart's content with those. They are good. a good buy. These, this is Sizzix, and it doesn't say what it is other than that. Um, these metal folders, you can kind of see, they have the cutting and embossing things on both sides, so it sandwiches in between. Um, I cannot recommend these, sadly. I thought these were going to be really cool, and I love the pattern. You know, I love these frames. But sadly, they do not cut well. Um, I have not had good luck cutting them with any kind of paper at all. They always have rough edges or little spots that didn't cut right. And um, the edges are not, they don't cut nice and crisp like this is, or the, like Spellbinders, the flat dies. They just don't cut as well. And they leave an edge that's kind of funky around it. And I'm really sad because I really like this die, but it does not work very good. So you might think about that before buying those, and it is by Sizzix. They make so much other good stuff. I don't know why these ones are so bad, but and they're already warped, and I've only used them a couple of times. They just are not very durable, and they don't they don't cut very well, sadly. Um, let's see, circle cutter. There's lots of kinds of circle cutters out there. This is the one that I found I really like. This one is by um, Martha Stewart, I believe. And I really like it. My sister has one by EK Success. And um, it works really well um, also. And you want to use glass. You want to want to use glass. It, if you try to use this on your um, like self-healing cutting mat or something like that, it, the blade for this, which these just slip off, the blade for this just gets caught up in the self-hewing mat. I don't know if you can see that really well. Let's see if I can get it in there for you. Maybe behind my hand. It's, hang on. Sorry about that. Had to pause, I did not plug in my iPod when I started this video so it was telling me I'm dying I'm dying so back to this um, this circle cutter you do want to use on glass um, tape your paper down because otherwise when it's on this glass it slides so easy it makes it harder for the circle cutter to work it does have these little pads in the bottom that will kind of you know grippy onto your paper um, a little bit I do like my sister's EK success one a little better it seems to be it seems to stay without scooting these tend to just get mushed down just a little bit but as long as you are you know hang on to it really good with your hand it cuts really easy so I'll just give you a demo here 
and then it just pops out and it's a great circle every time I hardly ever have issues with this give it a few times when you first try it um, to get the hang of it and make sure that when you hold this down you really give it some pressure so that it doesn't slide anywhere and tape it down every time I would have to say this is the best circle cutter I've seen or used um, and I really do like it so I would recommend it I also recommend the EK success one um, they're comparably priced and um, I kind of like the little doodaddy that you use to cut on my sisters it's kind of a cylinder type thing that slides and um, I like it a little bit better but this is an awesome one if this is what you have available it's Martha Stewart um, go for it I really like how it cuts okay collage podge versus mod podge this is collage podge mod podge this is the matte version um, I have been looking for something that would not give me such sticky pages because Mod Podge, everybody knows, gives you sticky pages, even the matte version. And um, I also tried Pam Carricker's Mixed Media Adhesive. I have to tell you, it's not very adhesive. You have to put on a lot of it on both papers to get it to stick, and even then, it's iffy. It does give you a matte finish over your pages, but I do not like the feel that it leaves, and it's kind of almost a little milky. I mean, I want to say it's not quite crystal clear um, when you put that over something. Um, but it was a good thing to try. It was also very expensive. This was like 16 or 18 bucks for this little tiny tub that is 8.45 ounces. Not very big. Um, this Mod Podge usually runs around 8 bucks-ish, I'm going to say, 8 or 9 for a 16 ounce um, tub and the collage podge I bought at Joann's for $10 and it is 16 fluid ounces. Um, I really, 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 really like this and I have not been using it very long but I have had no sticky pages with this. My pages just really don't stick. Um, Mod Podge, I was going to pull a page out of one of my journals to show you the difference between Mod Podge and Collage Podge, but I found that I have covered over every single page that had Mod Podge with something else that won't stick. So I kind of did a little sample while I was waiting for my iPod to uh, update so I didn't have so much crap on it because I had to take off a bunch of stuff. And I'm not sure if you can see the sheen very well there because I can't really see through my iPod that well. But this feels like paper. Once you put it on, it actually just feels, it's smooth like paper. I mean, you can, if you put it on and there's just a plain piece, if you really look, you can kind of tell, well, it's really hard to even tell where it is and isn't on the page. And it just, it's very smooth. Um, just feels like this, this paper and the Mod Podge, you can feel is slick. You know, you slide your hands right over it. There's no friction really, but like here, you can probably hear the difference. So, and the Mod Podge is still, it's still glossy. I don't know why they call it matte. It is definitely at least a satin finish. Um, very sticky. Don't like it. Um, I w I'm a collage podge girl. If you want to use Mod Podge on stuff that's like not going to be facing each other and touching, it's a great product. No problem. It glues stuff down really well. It's very sturdy. Um, and I like it for other applications, but for my journal pages, give me collage podge and you know, you can put that over the top of whatever else you have going on. If you use Mod Podge for a whole bunch of stuff, put a layer of collage podge over it. And I have really liked that so far. Um, another thing I wanted to kind of discuss is buckled pages, buckled. And you could probably see it a little bit where the Mod Podge is, how buckled this paper is. I mean, this paper is very buckled as opposed to this paper that is very, very flat. This is the difference between the Strathmore Visual Journal. It looks like this. It has a cover that comes on it that says Visual Journal. Um, this is the Strathmore Visual Journal Mixed Media Paper. I love it. It stays very flat as opposed to this, which is completely buckled and all the pages are buckled. If you put any moisture on it at all, it buckles really bad. I'd like to say that it gets better over time, but all my pages are still, they're still just really buckly. So not my favorite. If you're not going to use much moisture, 
then I'm sure the paper would be fine. I don't really like the finish of the paper. Um, although it would probably be good for sketching or maybe for um, like pen and ink drawings, but not washes. Um, colored pencil, anything like that, this paper will be fine for that. But if you're going to put very much um, me you know, wet media on it, like I like to use watercolor and acrylic and um, Mod Podge or Collage Podge, layers of glazes, it really, really is not my favorite for that. Um, Wow, well, you just got the journal right in your face there. And I would totally recommend Strathmore's... Um, mixed media papers. I think they're a little bit heavier. I think might be part of it. Um, the Strathmore paper just seems to be a better quality. I really like their 400 series watercolor paper as well. So if you want to do some watercoloring on a reasonably priced paper, um, the Strathmore 400 series, the 300 series is more like um, student or kid quality. It just, the it doesn't take the paint as well. It tends to sit on top. Um, also, that Canson journal I was showing you, the one that buckles a lot, when you use watercolor on it, if you, especially if it's a, um, not super watered down, if it's a more heavier mixture of it, it tends to want to sit on top like gouache and um, does not go in quite as easily. So, Strathmore. I love Strathmore. I also use their Bristol vellum and their drawing pads, and I really love their paper, so I very much recommend them. Um, I'll share with you, I've noticed, if you want low-tack uh, masking tape, these are not regular masking tape, they are low-tack. This is artist tape that is supposed to be low-tack. It is much stickier than drafting tape, but it's not as sticky as masking tape. So if you have something you want to peel it off of that won't be damaged, this is fine. Um, if you have really, really thin papers or um, uh, some things already on your page that could be pulled up by masking tape, this is Scotch drafting tape and it is, it is very low tack and it works great for um, masking off something or taping it down and then pulling it back up. So if you want to tape down your drawing paper to, you know, in your journal you want to transfer an image you can draw on the back of tracing paper and um, or draw on the front of your design on the front of your tracing paper turn it over color it in with graphite then if you tape that down to your page you can draw around it and transfer your design well this is great for that because it does not it does not peel up your paper as long as you're careful um, even I use onion skin for that purpose and I have no problem getting this off of onion skin um, when I work on drawings, um, like for fine art, for getting a drawing figured out for painting, I use this. And I just tape it down when I'm working on it, and then I just stick it to the side, and then I can put it on my watercolor paper and tape it down and peel it back up, and it will not rip up my watercolor paper. So, Scotch drafting tape is better low tack wise than, I don't know what, this doesn't have the brand on it anymore, I just got it. Uh, craft warehouse it just says artist tape um, so drafting tape is another favorite of mine and glues there are lots of glues out there and I will tell you what I like um, I have a bunch of different tacky glues here and there are tons of other ones out there that I have not tried um, mostly because I'm hooked on fast grab I love Eileen's fast grab tacky glue um, it is thick, so it doesn't just dump out, but it's, it's thick and it grabs right away and it sticks right away. Um, and it does not buckle your papers like some of the others, like the Turbo Tacky glue, glue, <laughs> glue um, is quick drying. Unfortunately, on anything thinner than a medium weight cardstock, it does buckle. Even on cardstock, it can buckle. Um, I had a really hard time using that on a project I was doing, but it does dry really quick. I will give that. Original tacky glue is great. It's a good glue. It's a good all-around glue, um, especially if you want to water it down a little bit to use it for, you know, a bigger project or something, then that works really good. Something that you needed to stay wet just a little bit longer. Um, if you're gluing a whole um, piece of paper to go into a journal, 
um, or to end papers for a book, things like that. Um, this works great because it doesn't dry as quick and you can water it down a little bit. Um, the clear gel tacky glue, I just, I find same problem. It just buckles and it's just, I don't really care for it at all, but it was given to me. So I tried it out. Um, my still, my fave fast grab. Um, so that gives you a little idea of what these paints will do. This one does not buckle paper as easily when you use it because it is a little bit thicker, um, but it does take a little bit longer to dry. If you use this to glue something down on your page, it you're going to have to let it dry just a little bit before you move on. And this one, you can move on pretty quick. So there's those. Oh, also, what I use for sticky pages, I've just found this and I love it, the Collage Podge. Um, and I have tried... Um, the Derivan Pam Carriker's Mixed Media Adhesive to um, seal my pages so they don't stick. And it works, but I don't like how it looks. It dulls everything. Um, the other thing that you can use is, um, this is Dorland's Wax Medium. Um, it's just a, basically a cold wax. And it's, it's very smooth. You know, it's kind of scoops right out. It's probably a little stiffer than margarine. Um, and I just spread on a little bit, just take some on my finger and I just kind of spread it around and then I let it dry for a couple of hours and then I just kind of buff it with a cloth and that brings it to back to a satiny kind of finish. It's not shiny, shiny, but it's a little bit satiny. Um, and it does help your pages not to stick. Um, so that's a good option for certain kinds of pages. If you are just going to want, if it's just paper, that you've collaged down. Um, collage Podge seems to work really good. I haven't had any problem with sticky pages. Um, let's see. Gesso. Oh, this is the one everybody doesn't know what to do with. Gesso. I like this Blit Acrylic um, Economy Acrylic Polymer. Um, I really like it. It comes with the flippy toppy. Oh, so does the collage podge. I love the flippy toppy thing. It's so much easier. You can just dump a little bit out. Um, this is fairly opaque. Um, not quite as opaque as I would like. Um, I have used a different um, brand that came in a tub and it was a little bit more opaque, but I really like the finish on this. It is not as smooth as Golden and much smoother than Liquitex. Liquitex Gesso has a lot of tooth. So if you want to use that to put under something, it's okay. If you're going to use it where it's going to, you're going to see it more, it's, it does, it's, very toothy. It's rough. And this is kind of in the middle. It has a little bit of tooth and it, um, I have had really good luck with it using paint over it. Um, that's sticking well and it sticks well to like magazine pages and stuff. I've had really good luck with this where some gessos, you know, I've been able to kind of just want to peel off of stuff. Um, let's see what other kind of gessos have I used? Liquitex, Golden, and I forget the brand that I got, but it was available at Walmart and it was in like a big tub like this. And I think it was probably, I don't know, $12 or $15 or something for the tub. I'm not sure. Um, so it was cheap and it was thick. You could like scoop it out and put it on um, your page. And so it was, it was thicker and, and more opaque, which I liked. But I, this has been my favorite so far. I really, really do like it. Um, this is the... Uh, does it say how many ounces it is on it? Uh, apparently not. Oh, wait. I think it says it's a quart. Oh, yeah, right here. It's a quart. So, 32 ounces. And it has lasted me a long time. And I like that I can just dump out some. And then if I want to use something to dip my brush in, I just put it in one of my little palette cups um, and use it that way. Is there anything else I can tell you about? I think that's about it. I think that's about it. I think that's all the opinions I have today. Lucky you. <laughs> um, I hope this is a little bit helpful for some of you guys out there, for some newbies. Um, kind of give you an idea before you go and um, purchase something. Maybe, you, you know, it helps to have an opinion occasionally. Um, have fun trying some of this stuff out, and I will see you later. Like, dislike, comment, whatever suits you. If you want to leave a snarky comment, I'm okay with that. 
like I said, it's entertaining. <laughs> Bye.